Whenever two ancient human groups were in proximity, yet exhibiting significant differences, such as possessing unique languages and cultural practices situated in adjacent areas, there is a likelihood they would have engaged in the practice of exchanging women among themselves. Since the late 19th century, it has been acknowledged that various human species once shared the earth with us. It was then that scientists determined the fossils discovered in European caves were from ancient humans, today referred to as Neanderthals. Our comprehension of Neanderthals has significantly evolved since then. Initially, in the early 20th century, Neanderthals were thought to be primitive and nearly animalistic. However, recent decades have brought clear evidence that these ancient relatives were much closer to us, having interbred with modern humans on several occasions. Discoveries at numerous locations have led to the suggestion that Neanderthals might have engaged in creating art, pointing to a sense of aesthetics. Ludovic Slimak, a dedicated explorer and archaeologist at France's Centre for Anthropobiology and Genomics of Toulouse, has been passionate about archaeology from the tender age of five. His work delves into the distinct nature of Neanderthals compared to Homo sapiens, the implications of their interbreeding with modern humans for our initial and concluding interactions with them, and the light this sheds on our intrinsic human qualities. Slimak challenges the long-standing image of Neanderthals as brutish, or, as viewed in Europe over the past two to four decades, merely an ancient reflection of ourselves. After extensive research and the discovery of millions of Neanderthal artifacts, he argues that our previous conceptions were misguided. His groundbreaking work on Neanderthals brings to the forefront a nuanced understanding of these ancient beings. Through detailed study, Neanderthals serve as a crucial lens for introspection, helping us to explore the essence of our existence, sapiens on this planet. By redefining what is a Neanderthal, Slimak has essentially crafted a mirror through which we can examine ourselves, enhancing our comprehension of human identity and our potential future trajectory. We leverage the reality that all modern humans, to varying extents, possess a certain amount of Neanderthal DNA to argue. Thus, Neanderthals haven't truly vanished. Instead, we merged, giving rise to a new form of humanity. However, this interpretation doesn't align with what the genetic evidence actually suggests. When we examine ancient DNA samples dated between 40,000 and 45,000 years ago, we find that these early Homo sapiens individuals had recent Neanderthal genetic contributions, which explains the presence of Neanderthal DNA in modern humans. Yet when efforts are made to analyze DNA from the last Neanderthals who lived concurrently with these early Homo sapiens, specifically in the period from 40,000 to 50,000 years ago, not a single specimen shows evidence of Homo sapiens DNA. This insight holds profound significance within the realm of cultural anthropology, as the transfer of genes does not inherently signal romantic unions. In every traditional society, the core issue revolves around the identities forged between two groups, a concept referred to as patrilocality. As mentioned already, when two distinct populations reside in proximity, potentially speaking different languages and adhering to unique traditions, yet occupying adjacent territories, they engage in the practice of exchanging women. This indicates that women possess a mobility within these exchanges, implying that a woman from one group may become a member of another group. Indeed, the practice of women moving to marry and start families in a new group is a phenomenon that fosters stronger ties and unity, leading to the formation of larger and more powerful communities. This is recognized as a universal principle within anthropology, highlighting the role of patrilocality, the movement of women for marriage, across diverse cultures. This principle of patrilocality and the mobility of women applies not just to Homo sapiens, but was observed in Neanderthals as well, as evidenced by DNA analysis. However, the interactions at the time of contact between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens present a complex picture. All Homo sapiens populations carry Neanderthal DNA, yet no Neanderthal has been found with Homo sapiens DNA, a critical factor in understanding the dynamics of their extinction and the nature of their interactions. This asymmetry suggests a unique scenario where a Neanderthal woman might join a Homo sapiens group, but not the other way around.
Such occurrences are rare and usually indicate extreme conflict between two populations, where one group is deemed to have violated critical taboos, effectively dehumanizing them. In these situations, the conquering group might annihilate the majority of the opposing group, but keep the women and children, integrating them into their own society. It's not suggesting that there was an outright war to eliminate the other, between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. While such extreme conflict might have occurred in specific locales, it likely wasn't the driving force behind the Neanderthals' extinction. What might have transpired then? It's conceivable that there was indeed an exchange of sisters between the two groups. However, the genetic disparities between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals were so pronounced that any attempts at integration ultimately failed. DNA evidence supports the notion that when these two populations interbred and produced offspring, the male children resulting from these unions were either sterile or unable to survive. This suggests that both populations made numerous attempts to forge alliances through interbreeding, but these efforts were ultimately futile due to biological incompatibilities. The hypothesis suggests that the gene flow between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens primarily involved Neanderthal women joining Homo sapiens communities, bearing female offspring who were then capable of passing on their genes. This scenario appears plausible given the evidence, though it's important to acknowledge that our current understanding of ancient DNA remains incomplete and is continuously evolving. The archaeological record offers a wealth of information about Neanderthals, evidenced by the vast quantity of tools, weapons, and flint artifacts they left behind. These millions of items present an embarrassment of riches that challenges researchers with the sheer volume of data available for analysis, much of which has yet to be fully examined. Despite the abundance of material culture, directly connecting these objects to the Neanderthals who crafted them proves elusive. A poignant illustration of this challenge is the discovery of the earliest Homo sapiens remains in continental Europe, which predate previous estimates of sapiens' arrival by over 9,000 years. The tools associated with these early Homo sapiens, primarily flint points, bear a striking resemblance to those attributed to Neanderthals. Such similarities suggest that, at a glance, Distinguishing between tools made by Neanderthals and those made by early Homo sapiens can be difficult. This observation underscores the complexity of interpreting archaeological finds and highlights the nuanced interactions between these two groups. When analyzing Neanderthal tools and weapons, a remarkable distinction emerges. Unlike the uniformity often found in Homo sapiens artifacts, each Neanderthal-crafted object is impressively unique. This variety reflects a deep level of craftsmanship and creativity among Neanderthals. Before shaping a tool, a Neanderthal craftsman would carefully consider the raw materials, morphology, texture, and color, allowing these attributes to guide the crafting process. As a result, each artifact they created was distinct, showcasing an incredible degree of creativity and individuality. This insight sheds light on the nature of the encounter between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Contrary to the notion of Homo sapiens encountering a less capable species, the interaction was between a highly efficient Homo sapiens and a highly creative Neanderthal population. The defining traits of Homo sapiens, efficiency, normativity, and uniformity, met with the exceptional creativity of Neanderthals. This perspective challenges simplified narratives of superiority and highlights the complex and nuanced relationship between these two human species. The inherent danger within Homo sapiens isn't a declaration of them as inherently malevolent, but rather a reflection of their extraordinary efficiency. The encounter between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens wasn't a battle between good and evil, but possibly a testament to the overwhelming impact of Homo sapiens' efficiency on shared environments, leading to the gradual disappearance of Neanderthals, not through malevolence, but through the sheer force of Homo sapien presence. Modern humans continues to exhibit this efficiency, now manifesting in the way we impact our planet. The destruction of biodiversity and environmental degradation isn't rooted in a deliberate desire to harm our world, but emerges from our innate capacity to utilize resources to their fullest extent, often beyond sustainable limits. This efficiency, while a testament to ingenuity, poses significant risks to our environment and other life forms. 
However, there is hope in the potential for cultural evolution and adaptation. Recognizing the dual nature of our efficiency as both a source of innovation and a threat can empower us to seek changes in how we interact with our planet. By acknowledging this aspect of our humanity and articulating it, we can work towards transforming our cultures in ways that mitigate our impact on the environment, striving for a balance that allows both human society and biodiversity to flourish. This path requires a conscious effort to understand and adjust our behaviors, highlighting the importance of awareness and dialogue in fostering a more sustainable coexistence with the natural world. In Homo sapiens societies, the tendency for collective uniformity, where there's a pervasive desire to act in concert, presents both a challenge and an opportunity. This inclination towards homogeneity suggests that individual or collective actions can significantly influence societal directions and outcomes. What we decide to do with this understanding holds the potential to shape our future. This phenomenon underlines the power of influential ideas and movements, which, when embraced by a critical mass, can transform societal norms, values, and behaviors. By harnessing our collective capacity for change, we can steer our societies towards paths that ensure not only the survival, but the thriving of our species and the natural world we depend on. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.